Hello, we're here to talk to you today about what standards-based grading looks like in science. This is Francesca Kaiser. I'm an eighth grade science teacher at Solon Middle School. And Dawn Posacani, I teach biology and other life science electives at the high school in Solon. To effectively implement standards-based grading, we had to be very clear about our standards and learning targets. We read several books to help us develop these. We used our district ICAT alignment and our Iowa assessment data to help determine what standards and learning targets students would be assessed on and reported. Our classroom instruction and activities occurred in the same manner as they did prior to implementation of standards-based grading. Students complete practice work. This work is collected and used to plan instruction. Students receive written and verbal feedback on their work. Practice or homework is not included in the final grade, um, but it's still important to communicate how students are doing or, more importantly, if they're doing that practice. Assessments were revised several times to focus on the standards and learning targets. We rewrote questions, created new questions, and eliminated others to best measure student understanding. Assessments look different now. They're organized by learning target or standards, and you might have just a single uh, learning target or standard on an assessment, or you might have multiple on an assessment. For scales, there are a lot of options. There's 10 point scales, five, four. Our district has chosen to be consistent and have a four point scale. We came up with student language as a science department to try and better communicate what that would look like for our students. My goal is to determine students' level of understanding. So one of the big changes that I went through was how I went about determining that level of success. No longer is it totaling up points, but it's looking at do they get it, do they really get it, do they not get it. And that's where having a rubric is really important. How I do this is I read the answers to all the questions for the learning target and give feedback in the form of questions to lead students when something is incorrect or to help them improve their response. In this example, the student has a clear and accurate understanding of what sustainability is, how the garbage patch in the Pacific Ocean relates to sustainability, and provides two solid solutions. Is this answer perfect? No. However, these are very small errors or minor things that she could do to improve her answer. I would score this at a four. She demonstrates a thorough understanding of the concept and gets it very well and can apply it. This second student example shows a level of understanding not yet proficient. This is where my feedback first leaves an impression with that student. Is it helpful? Is it encouraging them to get better? And second, does it help scaffold the student? This feedback is also going to help students make corrections before reassessment. Student reflection during and or after assessment is valuable. It helps students to think about what they did or didn't do and how that impacted their results and helps them consider their next steps. It also helps me as the teacher. That allows me to know if there's anything I did that worked, what students did outside of class, and allows me to guide them into action. Students can reassess, but they can't reassess everything and must meet certain requirements. They cannot reassess some lab practicals, midterms, and finals. This is up communicated up front to students. Middle school students reassess before and after school and during some study hall times. They revise past quizzes and classwork prior to this to demonstrate their improved understanding. They can only reassess once per day. This is a screenshot of a grade book. Learning targets are reported in student grades. Reassessment attempts are documented using the comment section. This screenshot shows learning targets in green. They are averaged to determine the student's grade. Orange entries are practice work and not included in their grades. These entries match the reporting homework scale shown earlier. Blue shows study session attendance. Again, only green entries factor into student grades. It's really important to continually encourage students to reassess. Verbal and written reminders to students, emails home, comments in the grading program are all utilized. Communication with students and parents is critical. Posters and notes on the board are helpful reminders for students. A parent letter goes home at the start of the year providing information on the philosophy. Questions are answered at open house and conferences. Further information is posted on the district website for families to access. 
This is still a work in progress for us in our science classrooms and for our students, parents, and community. Our email addresses are provided for further information.